Today we're going to be talking about some basic differentiation rules. And if we were doing this in class, we would discover some of these rules using our calculators and then we'd come to some conclusions, but I'm just going to give them to you in this video. So some rules for differentiation. So the derivative of a constant is zero. So if I'm trying to find the derivative of three, that's zero. Because remember, derivative means slope of a tangent line. What does the function y equals three look like? Well, that's a straight line, horizontal line, and that horizontal line slope is zero. The power rule. Okay, so now this is the essentially shortcut when we're trying to take the derivative. So the power rule is you bring down your exponent, I brought down my exponent, I brought down my exponent, your new exponent reduces by one. So if I'm, say, I'm trying to find the derivative of x to the third, bring down your exponent, reduce your exponent by one. Constant multiple rule. So you don't take the derivative of the constant. You just bring that out in front times by whatever the derivative of the function is. So say I needed to find the derivative of 7x to the fourth. I, I bring down the 4 and multiply it to the 7. So it's 7, I should say, times by the derivative of x to the fourth. So that is going to be 4x to the third which simplifies to be 28x to the third. So basically you bring down the four and multiply it to the seven, reduce your exponent by one. And then sum and difference rule, just move along your different derivatives and take derivative of each term when you're adding and subtracting. That doesn't <clears throat> work for when you're multiplying or when you're dividing. So make sure you realize that we're gonna do that in a later lesson. Okay, find the derivative of each of the following. So my derivative of this one, and let me get my variable correct. Okay, bring down the two, multiply it to the negative two. I get a negative four t. Derivative of three t, well my exponent's one, reduce my exponent by one, multiply it to, multiply the one to the three, Reducing your exponent by one is t to the zero, so that's just gonna be zero. Derivative of a constant is negative six. I should say t to the zero is one. I said it was zero. Okay, so f of x is a little bit more complicated. What I recommend is that any fractional exponents you write as a fraction, any roots you write as a fraction, and any negative exponents, right as negative exponents. So now we take the derivative. I haven't taken the derivative yet. Bring down your exponent, reduce your exponent by one, take the three, bring it down and multiply it to the five, reduce your exponent by one, subtract, because I take the seven and I multiply it to the negative five, so that's 35 x, reduce your exponent by 1, that gets you negative 6. Okay, writing the equation of a tangent line. Remember, that's what you need to be able to do. That's one of my big things that I want to um, make sure you realize you need to know how to do. Remember, every tangent line has a point and has a slope, which now our fancy word for is derivative. Okay, so my point, I plug in 8 into my function, the cube root of 8, so 3 of the same things that multiply to be 8 is going to be 2. Then I find my derivative. Okay, so again, remember, write f of x with a fractional exponent. So that is 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds. I need to find f prime of 8, so it's 1 third times by 8 to the negative 2 thirds. Okay, so let's talk about what that is. 8 to the negative 2 thirds. First of all, understand that's really 1 over 8 to the 2 thirds. 
So 8 to the 2 thirds can be written as the cube root of 8 squared or it can be written as the cube root of 8 squared. Well, if I square the 8 first, so if I square the 8 first here, that's going to make that number a really big number, and then I have to cube root it. I might not know the cube root of this number. Hopefully you do. But I want to demonstrate that what you need to do is not this bottom one, but use that top one and cube root 8 first. So the cube root of 8 is 2 squared. That's 4. So this equals 1 fourth. So f prime of 8 is 1 third times 1 fourth, which is 1 twelfth. Okay, so now we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Remember, I use point solve formula. I'm going to keep telling you guys that. Your y1 is up here at 2. Your slope we just found, x minus 8. Now remember, when you're plugging in this slope, you're not plugging in this derivative. You don't plug in your x there. You actually find the value of the derivative. Okay, use the definition. I apologize. Use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of sine of x. Okay, so remember our definition of the derivative. As h goes to 0, it's a limit. Okay, so I have the limit as h goes to 0 of the sine of x plus h minus the sine of x all over h. So you need your sum and difference identities. If we're in class, I go through a whole spiel on how I remember them. Okay, so I was just looking, trying to remember what to do here because I don't have my notes in front of me. So I rearrange my terms. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these first two terms over h. So I have the sine of x cosine of h minus sine of x all over h plus, <coughs> excuse me, and then I group these last few terms also over the common denominator of h. So I have the sine of h cosine of x all over h. The reason I do that is if I factor out a sine of x here, I'm left with Okay, so let's look at what we have here. So I take now the limit as h goes to 0 of the sine of x times by the limit as h goes to 0 of this cosine h minus 1 over h plus the limit as h goes to 0. I'm going to run out of room. Okay, I'm going to write it below. It's not in the denominator. I just ran out of room. Okay, so let's talk about what these all are. This limit, there's no h there. So your limit there is sine of x. 
this is a common limit that you needed to remember from last chapter. That equals zero. This limit here, again, a common limit from last chapter, is one. And this limit here is cosine x. So looking at that, my whole limit simplifies to cosine x. So what do we need to know? The derivative with respect to x of sine of x is cosine x. OK. <clears throat> Use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of cosine of x. OK, so do the same process. I actually want you to physically pause the video, try it on your own. So what this derivative, you will need the idea that cosine of x plus h is the cosine of x plus, I apologize, I did that wrong. Okay, so take a minute, pause the video, do that. I'm going to do it real quick here. I wish I could pause my video and just write it all on top of it. I'm going to try that and see. Now I can't. Okay, so I'm going to do this really quickly. Notice how I keep writing my limit. I use this identity that I just gave you. Um, I'm going to pair things together. So I'm going to pair the things that have an X in it with your cosine over your denominator. Oh, I really messed that up, didn't I? I'm trying to go too fast. So factor out your cosine of x. Okay, so again, I'm going to do some limits here. So I'm going to say the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine x times by the limit as h goes to 0 cosine h minus 1 all over h. Okay, so let's just worry about that first term because I kind of ran out of room. Okay, this limit again, cosine x. This limit here is zero. Now I have, so this first term turns into basically zero. Then I have in there a minus. This limit is sine of x times by That limit, which is 1. So what do I need to know? The derivative with respect to x of the cosine of x equals the negative sine of x. OK, so now doing some examples. And again, these are just like the examples that you would do normally. Um, so I take my derivative. That 4 is just a coefficient, so you just carry it along. You have to take the derivative of sine, derivative of sine, cosine. Next one. 7 fifths really is just a coefficient. 
derivative of cosine is a negative sine of x. Derivative of sine is cosine x. This is a number. That's some number. That's some constant. So what's the derivative of a constant? Zero. So that's what your answer is for those. Okay, using the definition of the derivative to find this. This is a long lesson. I think I do this in two days in class. Okay, so e to the x plus h is e to the x times by e to the h minus e to the x. Because remember, same base, when you're multiplying, you can add the exponents. I'm trying to go too fast. So I'm just kind of working backwards from that. Because what did we do? When we were doing all of these, we factored out an e to the x. Since I'm multiplying, I can kind of choose where I put that h denominator. Actually, I'm going to show another step in here. I apologize. I'm trying to rush because I'm worried about timing. So now we have e to the x times by the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h. This limit, since there's no h, goes to e to the x. This limit I have over here for you is 1. So what do you need to know? The derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. So it's just the same thing. Um, so the derivative with respect to x of a to the x that equals a to the x ln of a. And that's just something that you're going to have to memorize. Um, I guess I could research how to derive that. Okay. Let's do some examples with this. Let's do them in purple. So, first one. F prime of x. 3 times e to the x. Well, that's just... Your constant derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Plus x e to the third. Remember, this is a number. This is like that 3. So what's the derivative of some number times x? Well, that's just some number. Okay, bring down the 2, multiply it to the 4. So I have 8 ninths. Reduce your exponent by 1. 5 derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of sine is cosine x. Derivative of 2 to some number, I'd give you that formula. Remember, is a to the x ln a. So I have 2 to the x ln 2. Okay. And that's my video on basic differentiation rules. I hope you enjoyed it.